Thank you so much. I'm glad to have this opportunity to, uh, to, to share with you some of the challenges, environmental challenges, and especially share with you some of the efforts made here. Uh, I know you had a long day, so I'll try to be uh, efficient and uh, concise. Uh, and uh, you know, with all this, uh, uh, Jimmy has put such a, all these things into perspective. So hopefully it's much easier for you to understand this. Uh, last 30 years, tremendous growth, as Jimmy put it, uh, upsides and downsides. And uh, uh, on the downsides, uh, we do have uh, this massive industrialization and urbanization putting pressure on our fragile environment, causing an increase of pollution discharge, a destruction of the ecosystem, and the exhaustion of our uh, limited natural resources. So these are some of the largest uh, freshwater lakes in China. In 20 years of time, they have been degraded into kind of a, um, almost like a successful laced with, uh, with blue algae uh, every summer time. And um, those are in the, in the, in the, in the south and uh, in the north, some of the rivers have been uh, hugely polluted. And um, all this pollution would have uh, a serious impact. And one of that, that is uh, the, the public health threat. Uh, when 300 million rural residents don't have access to safe drinking water, and when one third of the uh, water taken for um, centralized urban supply cannot meet the, uh, the, the standards uh, as, a, as a water source. And as Jimmy put it, you know, today, unfortunately, we again got these hazy days. Not the worst, I assure you, for Beijing, but still, you know, it's, a, it's a problem. And you can see from a map that the fine particles, or the PM2.5, how thick that could be uh, in, in our part of the world. And um, uh, hundreds of millions up to, I think, up to 80% of the urban residents being exposed to such badly polluted air. And then another health consequence would come from all this uh, you know, irrigation uh, with wastewater and all this unsafe disposal of waste and including hazardous waste, so causing all this soil contamination. And in China, every year, we have official data shows 12 million tons of food con crops contaminated by heavy metals each year. So that's a, that's a major, major uh, topic that, uh, and that's a major topic that will be addressed again in this ongoing, you know, this upcoming uh, annual National Congress meeting. And resource-wise, you know, the limited resource is being destroyed. The uh, two-thirds of our cities are in shortage of water, but all this discharge from the industry, from the urban sewage, are destroying these limited resources, causing a large proportion of our rivers and lakes being badly contaminated. And social stability, and uh, Jimmy talked about how important that is. But now, you know, every year we have, you know, all this 10, more than 10,000 of collective incidents uh, instigated by, caused by this uh, uh, environmental pollution and eco-destruction and uh, threaten our social stability. Of course, global impact. Uh, China wants to be a, you know, grow into a, 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 a into the, global community in a peaceful way, but, uh, but, but in less than 10, ta 10 years of time, our coal consumption again got doubled. And, um, and of course, that, uh, that will have a consequences on the global warming and other, uh, many other, in many other ways. So based on such a kind of a understanding of such a, a social political uh, consequences, and also in response to this rising public awareness and rising public demand, the Chinese government um, have very, uh, you know, have changed significantly, changed its uh, its strategy and policy, and now, uh, you know, shifting the, the 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 policy from development at whatever cost to kind of a uh, they call scientific way of development. Basically, means more balanced, more sustainable, and try to you know one of the theme is to seek harmony between man and nature. And they also try to integrate all these environmental targets into our economic development plan and, and, and try to make that happen. However, despite all these tremendous efforts, you know, we have, um, we have all this, you know, our air still remains to be polluted, the water still contaminated. What, what are the real obstacles? When we, when we assess the situation, we find that it's not just the lack of technology or even the lack of money, it's the lack of motivation. The motivation should come from the government enforcement, should come from all this uh, you know, pricing scheme and others. But unfortunately, in this country, enforcement continues to remain to be very weak. The cost of violation remains to be very low. 
So all these companies cannot meet the compliance even. So we need the we need all this motivation from the from the um, from the public side. That's an increasing understanding. So with that in mind, the government changed laws and policies to re to set up legislation legislative pro uh, you know legal framework policy framework for public participation uh, in in our environmental governance and um, and we also you know as an NGO set up in the year 2006 the Institute of Public and Environmental Affairs or IPE you know we, we also trust that uh, you know access to information is the prerequisite for any meaningful public participation so we need to ensure that with uh, so the first project that we have been doing uh, you know we, we 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 conducted and we are still doing that is to create a national water pollution database and now extend to air and uh, and solid hazardous waste so with that you know people can check the air the environmental quality data the amount of discharge and also a list of uh, of polluters in all their different uh, you know provinces and cities and they can check about all this different data uh, with just a mouth click away from them now and uh, we call it water pollution map because we got all this uh, collect all these maps which color our water uh, rivers according to its level of pollution you can see this is the Beijing the area of Beijing is uh, Beijing is here and you can see all this river running red and black uh, the black color means that the river is totally useless and, uh, and you could see uh, uh, more, about 100 million people living in this area and they live along all these waterways uh, so millions of people have been threatened and uh, of course all this land-based pollution get into the seas and causing the coastal contamination but what uh, eventually caused the most attention is this list of violators uh, the the list of records of violations by all these corporations and sewage plants uh, we started with 2,500 of them, and today actually it's over 96,000 uh, of, of this uh, uh, violation records. So in the Western countries, in America, it started in America, information being used as a tool to manage environment with uh, TRI, or Toxic Release Inventory, so people can check it out on digital map. In Europe, they have PRTR, and, uh, and people can check it out. In China, we still don't have that system, but we as an NGO are working with other stakeholders to try to locate all these major polluting uh, pollu poll polluters on the digital map. So 10,000 of them is responsible for 65% of China's air and water emission. We, we need to bring them uh, close to our people to allow them to see where they are, who they are, where they are, and whether they have a, a violation records and, uh, and if we overlap, this map with uh, with a map I just talked about, you could see why some of the rivers from the very source to the to the end can run in this black color. And uh, we take advantage of this uh, you know new technology like Google Earth and others, so people can can have a more graphic view you know uh, on some of the some of these uh, uh, polluting factories. Why we list them on our digital map? Uh, so people deserve to know that it's important to. To, to their to their own health uh, and uh, and their the, uh, the quality of life. So when people access all this data, the data itself cannot make change. The, it, it should be the people who need to use this data. So how how do we generate this motivation uh, with the information? We decided that we will start from consumption. You know, and Jimmy talked about that in China it's still limited, uh, the, but the consumption is actually go, growing and uh, going up. You know the trend is uh, moving toward the expansion of uh, of consumer. Chinese, you know, now talking about Apple. You know, China has just overtaken Europe as the second largest uh, market for for Apple products. Uh, and uh, and and then China is not just a, a you know it, it, it the consumer by its own. It's the manufacturing center for the entire world, and uh, uh, and and it's the workshop of the world. And of course. Uh, exporting cheap products but dump all this waste in our backyards, contaminating China's uh, water, air, and uh, soil, and even coastal seas. So that's not quite sustainable. That's the, the, the other side of uh, our, our export industry. And uh, so how do we motivate change? I think we need to provide information to the consumers, to the brands, who are kind of making all this consumption and sourcing from China, 
and, uh, and help them to make, hopefully, a green choice. Because choice is in their hand, it's in the consumer's hand. But I hope that they could make a more responsible uh, choice. With that in mind, a whole group of NGOs, 21 of us, came up together in 2007 to uh, launch this Green Choice Initiative, calling for consumers to, to, to mind the environmental performance of the suppliers and uh, to the manufacturers, and also put pressure on the brands to make green uh, sourcing from this country. And now the Green Choice Alliance, this network of NGOs, have been extended to 41. And uh, they are, they're spreading across China. We all care about the environmental performance of uh, pollution control of, by the corporations. So we turned this, uh, uh, our database into a supply chain management tool and hoping the major brands to make a commitment not to source from polluters in this country, not to source from those who openly uh, violated the, the laws and standards from this country. And of course, some of them say, oh, we have this long time ago. But now the difference is that they can check it out. You know, before they could say, but no one to, no, no way to really validate that openly. But now, typing the keyword of any given supplier, they will instantly know whether that company have a government sourced uh, violation records during the past seven years. And uh, they could check about, according to which government document, the one had been found breaking what rules in which year. And, uh, and, and with this public access to information, the companies one by one, you know, on our list, change their behavior of paying fines year after year and started coming to the NGOs to make public disclosure about what went wrong uh, and how they try to fix their problem. So we allow them to, 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 to upload all this uh, new permitting, the, uh, the updated monitoring, and uh, also going through third-party audit under the supervision of NGOs to try to independently uh, validate their, their performance, their compliance. Uh, Jimmy mentioned about our, our sort of debates and, uh, and, and interaction with, uh, with companies like Apple. Yeah, we did pick one industry as our first uh, industry to try, to try to interact with. We started with, uh, with the IT industry because this, this industry, you know, not just, uh, you know, many, many people's uh, minds probably it's a grain or even virtual industry, but in reality, all these gadgets that we're using actually coming out of this mining and uh, smothering and, uh, and then the uh, sort of electronic plating and battery and it's all the same, you know, all the same uh, old way of manufacturing and uh, discharge not just normal pollutants but even toxic and heavy metals. So we decided that uh, to, to check out our list of, uh, of violators and then try to link them with all these brands. Uh, the, you know, you, you can recognize some of the familiar names but also, you know, foreign brands and also local brands like Lenovo. And of course, many of them started, uh, you know, interacting with, uh, with the NGOs, uh, with, the, with the 30 NGOs in China, the coalition. But then there are those who just resist that. So we have to go uh, went through some very, you know, hard type of investigation, on-site investigation, and then identify all this pollution and poisoning cases like this, and uh, we have the workers being poisoned or, 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 or killed even. And we have the rivers you know, being, uh, being degraded to such a shape. And uh, through the, all these are you know, Apple suppliers. And, uh, and we have the local people uh, complaining about uh, you know, petitioning against all this health impact on them. And, um, and, and you know, what, can, what, what could bring people down, you know, down their knees? It's uh, 10 years of uh, constant, all this uh, air and water and uh, noise. Um, so it's, uh, it's it, so the voice we trust that the message deserves to be learned by the outside world. And uh, we have the consumers making their, their, their in China, making, making their voice heard and try to express their concerns. You know, they put all this on our micro blog, Chinese version of, uh, you know, Twitter and, and try to have the, uh, the brands that bring their cell phone, not just Apple, but uh, 30 other brands. And uh, so this company started, you know, bow to this public pressure and gradually move from non-responsive and eventually all the way to try to be proactive. And we created such a kind of a, a scorecard so that consumers can easily see, you know, who are doing what, what's, what are their performance. And, uh, and, and, and so make this cross kind of comparison and so that it, 
can create a healthy competition over a level playing field. And uh, I'm glad to report some of the major companies, including some of the major American brands, are the leading, you know, most proactive users of the system, like uh, Nike, Walmart, GE, and Coca-Cola, and now Levi's, and, uh, and also even Apple started making this interaction, um, started using the system. So, so far, they have driven some over 570 uh, polluters on our list to come out to the NGOs to make public disclosure uh, and, and try to take corrective action and fix their problem. And uh, all these are publicly available. So over 100 of them have been through third-party audits and, uh, and with having their records removed after they, you know, through all this correction, fix their problem. So and we are eyeing for, you know, building up an open and transparent governance structure and started with access to information, you know, the pollution map, and then we developed all this index to drive government and corporate disclosure, and then use green choice initi initiative to try to create a, a ways for consumers, for the investors and even banks to get involved and motivate change. So I want to close this talk by saying that uh, the environmental challenge is real and severe. It just not, not just matters to this generation, but the generations to come. And uh, the battle of winning and losing that I think globally is in China, because all this pollution are now shifted here. But although we have all these gaps in our governance structure, but there are some social progress made in this country. The rising awareness uh, level by our people, the expanding uh, transparency, and the deeper public participation with all these NGO activities, um, I think has created a unique opportunities uh, for, for us to create a new way of governance so that all these major stakeholders like the government, the corporations, and the public can have a, can, can have a healthy interaction and united, uh, I, I trust that uh, united we could, we could overcome these massive environmental challenges in China. So I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you.